Story recap here. Today I'm going to explain a fantasy and horror film called Fright Night. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. One night, Charlie and his girlfriend Amy make out in his room. But when Charlie starts to touch more than Amy allows him to, she becomes upset. Of course, Charlie is a bit disappointed that they've been dating for a year but haven't gone all the way. He apologizes for his sudden outburst, so Amy eventually accepts his request. However, Charlie catches sight of his new neighbors carrying a coffin into their house. When he tells Amy, she doesn't believe him because it's the same scene in the show they're watching. Despite having Amy waiting for him in bed, Charlie is no longer in the mood to make love. The neighbors are now preoccupying his mind. Because of this, Amy walks away angrily. The next day at school, Amy is still mad at Charlie, so his friend Ed teases him about it. When he gets home, a woman mistakenly arrives in front of their house looking for his neighbors. Therefore, Charlie points her in the right direction. While Charlie is studying, he hears a sudden scream from the house next door. The following day, Amy goes with Charlie at a diner. They both apologize to each other hoping to solve their conflict. However, Charlie ignores Amy again as he sees the news report about the death of a woman, the same woman he saw yesterday. Angry for getting ignored for the second time, Amy takes a burger and slaps Charlie's face with it. When he gets home, Charlie inches towards his neighbor's house, planning to peek at their basement to check the coffin. But Billy, the live-in carpenter for his neighbor, stops him. That night, Charlie falls asleep while watching movies in his room, but he suddenly wakes up and catches sight of one of his neighbors, Jerry, seemingly about to sleep with a woman. Yet that doesn't seem to be the case as he sees Jerry reveal a set of fangs and is about to bite down on the woman's neck. Jerry catches Charlie watching him, so he slowly closes the blinds. Charlie wastes no time trying to wake his mom but fails, so instead, Charlie sneaks to the bushes to spy on his neighbors further, seeing Billy carry a trash bag out to his car, presumably with the woman's body. Although he's hidden well, Charlie's mom comes out to call him, alerting the two men of his position. He runs inside, and his mom thinks that he's just having a nightmare or he's probably sick. He tells his mom that Jerry is probably a vampire, but she's unbelieving. The next morning, he tries the same thing to Amy, who also doesn't believe him. Charlie walks out to report it to the police, but Amy tells him that he might get locked up if he does. So Charlie decides to leave the vampire part of the report because he's still certain that his neighbors killed the women in the news. He goes to the house with Lieutenant Lennox, a homicide detective, so Billy welcomes them inside. The lieutenant questions Billy about Charlie's reports about has he seen the murdered woman in their house and the trash bags containing her body. Billy gladly lets Lieutenant check their trash, but Charlie is insistent. He slowly loses his credibility because he doesn't really see what's inside the trash bag. With no other option left, Charlie mentions the coffin in their basement, then says that Jerry is sleeping there because he's a vampire. The detective thinks he's now full of lies, so they leave, mad at Charlie for the ludicrous reports. After drawing more attention to himself, Charlie is now afraid that they'll kill him, so he drives to Ed's house to ask for help. Ed thinks he's joking, therefore Charlie bribes him with money. Ed gives Charlie a cross, telling him that he needs to have total faith for it to work. He also instructs him to use garlic and blessed holy water. Charlie feels as though it's not enough, but Ed reminds him that he'll be safe if they don't invite the vampire inside. When he gets home, Charlie nails his window shut, but his mom calls him downstairs to introduce him to Jerry. Charlie starts to freak out, realizing that his mom has given Jerry permission to enter their house. Jerry even jokes about being a vampire, implying that he's heard of Charlie's accusations. That night, Charlie sleeps with a cross in his hand but gets woken up by thudding noises in their house. He cautiously walks around the house to look for the source of the noise. Relief hits him when he sees that it's just a tree hitting their window. However, he doesn't know that Jerry's already in his mom's room. He makes sure to trap the mom, shutting the door tightly that the frame breaks before going inside Charlie's room. Still oblivious, Charlie goes back to bed. He realizes that Jerry is sneaking up behind him, but when he turns, Jerry's hand is already on his neck, throwing him across his room. He walks closer to Charlie and grabs him by the neck again before slamming him on the wall. Charlie tries to press the cross onto Jerry, but the vampire is too strong. Jerry easily opens Charlie's nailed down window before attempting to throw the boy off. Persistent, Charlie fumbles beside him, retrieving a pencil that he stabs through Jerry's hand. Charlie's actions anger Jerry, thus awakening his true form. Although Jerry will attack further, he stops when he hears his mom wake up, calling for Charlie, so he leaves. Her door was stuck, but she manages to open it and check on Charlie. This time, he says that he was just having a nightmare. Furthermore, Charlie receives a phone call from Jerry, telling him that he destroyed his car, but he will do something worse to Charlie. Coincidentally, Charlie sees a man on TV, Peter, a famous vampire killer. He watches Peter kill a vampire on TV by driving a stake through their heart, giving Charlie an idea. The next day, 
Charlie waits for Peter outside of his workplace to ask for his help, but the TV celebrity isn't too amused with his sudden presence. Peter has just been fired because nobody wants to watch his show about killing vampires anymore. When Charlie tells him about his vampire neighbor, Peter confesses lying about the vampire thing. He ignores Charlie and drives away, leaving the boy helpless. Ed and Amy visit Charlie worried for their friend, but their concern rises through the roof when they see Charlie's room filled with candles and crosses. He is sitting on his bed, making a stake. He plans to kill Jerry before nightfall, so Amy stops him because it's murder. However, Charlie doesn't think it's murder to kill a vampire. They manage to talk Charlie out of his plan, telling him that they're going to try speaking to Peter for him so that he can have backup. Despite that, Charlie knows that his friends still don't believe him. His two friends knock on Peter's door pleading for help. They explain the situation, telling him about Charlie but Peter still thinks he's crazy. So the three devise a plan. Instead of helping him defeat Jerry, they're going to help Charlie realize that Jerry isn't a vampire. But Peter disagrees on helping until Amy promises to pay him. They call in advance, asking whether they can do a vampire test on Jerry for Charlie. Jerry agrees but says no to crosses and holy water, but Peter reassures him that it's just going to be regular tap water. That night, Peter arrives and visits Jerry. However, Charlie is frustrated that Peter didn't bring anything else but the holy water, anxious that they will die once he's proven right. But alas, because nobody believes him, they continue with their regular plan of just making Jerry drink the fake holy water. Jerry greets Amy, immediately charming her with a chivalrous introduction. Peter hands Jerry the vial of holy water. Despite knowing that it's all just an act, Jerry shows a little apprehension before drinking the water. When nothing happens, Charlie is convinced that the water isn't blessed despite everyone else trying to tell him otherwise. Charlie brings out his cross, making Jerry back away. He wants to make Jerry touch it, but Peter stops him. The homeowners escort the group out, though before they can leave, Peter checks himself on the mirror, catching that Jerry has no reflection. Out of surprise, Peter drops his mirror, leaving a broken shard on the floor. With a sudden change in demeanor, Peter hurriedly pulls the kids outside. Charlie notices this, realizing that Peter finally knows the truth, so Peter tells him about the lack of reflection. However, instead of helping, he just drives away in fear. Jerry notices the mirror shard left by Peter, connecting that the fake vampire killer probably realized the truth. On the way home, Charlie wants to make sure that he brings Amy back safely, but Ed wants to take a risky shortcut. Charlie and Ed argue, so they split ways. However, they run back as they hear Ed screaming. He exclaims that he got bit by a vampire, but he's just playing a prank on Charlie. He mocks Charlie, who grabs Amy away, and leaves Ed alone. Unknowingly, Jerry is stalking the lone boy through the alleyways. Ed soon notices his stalker and knows that he's in trouble. He tries to run away, but ends up on a dead end where Jerry corners him. He cries in terror, but Jerry consoles him, saying that everything will be okay, luring Ed on his side. The couple hears Ed scream once more, but this time they ignore it, thinking he's just playing another prank. A little while later, Jerry catches up to Amy and Charlie, attempting to outrun him. He keeps showing up in front of their tracks, so they enter a club in hopes of losing him. Charlie runs straight towards the telephone to call the police. Meanwhile, Ed visits Peter, pretending that a vampire is after him. When Peter pulls him inside, Ed reveals his bite mark, showing that he's now a vampire. He starts mocking Peter before attacking him. Peter immediately presses a cross on Ed's face, burning him. Gaining the upper hand, he chases Ed away with a cross. On the other hand, Charlie doesn't get any luck with the police because they doubt him. Now he's left to comfort a scared Amy. Since they have no choice, he calls Peter, but Jerry is already on their trail. As if in a trance, Amy starts going near Jerry and they dance together. All the while, Charlie tries to convince Peter to help him, but he doesn't want to get involved any further, feeling fearful. Jerry completely enthralls Amy, and when Charlie notices this, he confronts him. The two kisses in front of Charlie, angering him. So he attempts to punch him, but Jerry is too strong. Jerry tells Charlie that he wants Peter in exchange for Amy. The bouncers notice the commotion and try to escort them away. Thus, Jerry attacks them with his vampire hand, slashing the bouncer's neck before throwing the other one to the ground. The people are starting to panic all over the club. Because of the stampede, Amy and Charlie get separated, so Jerry takes Amy with him. Unfortunately, when Charlie gets out, Amy is already in the car with Billy, Jerry, and Ed. Charlie runs to Peter's address, banging on his door in desperation. Before letting him in, Peter makes Charlie touch the cross. When he doesn't get burned, he lets him in. Charlie notices that Peter plans to flee, so he begs the older man. Peter thinks of calling the police, but Charlie knows that they won't be of help. It's only up to the two of them. Peter confesses that his vampire killer character is just a TV persona. Still, Charlie doesn't care about any of that. He still wants Peter's help because otherwise they're going to die. Nonetheless, Peter still can't help him. On the other hand, Amy wakes up in Jerry's home and looks for Charlie, but when Jerry approaches her, she easily gives in. She lets him kiss and touch her, and at the end, allows him to bite her. 
As Charlie braves himself to confront Jerry alone, Peter comes up from behind him, now willing to help. This time, he brings a complete set of equipment alongside a gun against Billy, who is allegedly just a regular human. They plan to sneak out the back, but the front door opens for them. Jerry greets them at the top of the stairs, telling them they need to get through him to save Amy. Peter immediately uses his cross, but Jerry just laughs it off before breaking it with his hands, telling him that he doesn't have enough faith. However, Charlie does. As he takes out his cross, Jerry backs away in fear. But Billy comes to his assistance and slaps Charlie off the stairs. Peter runs away, leaving Charlie in the vampire's house. But he goes next door to call for help, shouting for Charlie's mom. But the phone lines are cut, and what greets him in the mom's bedroom is Ed, wearing a wig. Ed starts to attack Peter, so he immediately runs away. When Ed appears, he's taken the form of a wolf and tackles Peter, but he's able to drive a stake through the wolf. He goes to check on Ed, slowly dying as he starts shifting back to his human form. Desperately trying to remove the stake, Peter watches in sympathy as Ed suffers but lets him die. Meanwhile, Jerry carries Charlie next to Amy and gives him a stake, telling him he needs it before dawn breaks. Because of this, Charlie checks on Amy, realizing that she's turning into a vampire. When Ed's dead, Peter takes his stake back and returns to the house. He manages to sneak to Charlie's location, but the door is locked. He instructs Charlie to make a lot of noise while he tries to break the door, so Charlie pretends to beg for help. It appears to work since Jerry and Billy just listen in amusement. However, Jerry immediately realizes that Peter is back. Peter tells Charlie that to save Amy, they must defeat Jerry before dawn. As they try to look for the vampire, Billy blocks them on the stairs, so Peter brings out his gun. He doesn't hesitate to shoot Billy in the forehead, but the man comes back alive after a few moments later. When Billy grabs Peter, Charlie drives a stake through him. Billy starts oozing green blood, and his body starts deteriorating until he's left with nothing but bones, clattering down the stairs. The two split up as Charlie hears Jerry up on the roof, while Peter hears Amy screaming, awakening in her vampire form. Peter takes out his cross, scaring Amy as he backs away from the room. Charlie still can't find Jerry, but a few moments later, he jumps in from the outside through the window. Peter still tries to scare him with a cross. His faith increases, and the daylight slowly creeps in. Knowing that he might lose, Jerry transforms into a bat and starts attacking Peter. When Charlie tries to help him, he gets bitten. But the sun starts to come up more, scorching Jerry, so he flies down to the basement and the two follows. A noise alerts Charlie who sees Amy walking towards him. Meanwhile, Peter stumbles upon the coffin's secret room, where Jerry locked himself in. Amy tries to attack Charlie, but he takes out the cross. She pretends to cry, but when she hears him drop the cross, she attacks again. Charlie runs away while Peter attempts to break through the coffin. When he opens it, he tries to nail the stake through Jerry, but he manages to pull it off. He attacks Peter, so Charlie breaks the blackened windows in the basement to let the sunlight peek through. When Jerry is distracted, Peter joins Charlie in breaking the windows, cornering the vampire. However, Jerry tries to run back to his coffin, so Peter closes it. Jerry tries to attack Peter one last time. Thus, Charlie runs over to help him, uncovering a window behind them. It hits Jerry straight in the chest, destroying him. With that, Charlie goes to protect Amy from the sunlight. They all duck as the vampire's destruction causes chaos around the basement, but they manage to defeat Jerry and turn Amy back to normal. Things appear to be peaceful now. Peter gets his job back on TV and even mentions Charlie's name in his show while he goes back to making out with Amy in his room. When Peter's show is finished, Charlie turns off the TV. However, he sees a glimpse of glowing red eyes looking at him from the neighbor's house, but he doesn't tell Amy. He goes back to bed with her, not noticing Ed laughing from next door. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.